What is going on everyone, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to unpivot columns in a dynamic frame in AWS Glue using PySpark. I'll be walking through how to do this with some sample product sales data. So in this example, you can see we have our products in one category and the sales by each month. I'm going to show you how we can unpivot our data set so we don't have a new column for every single month of data and rather it is normalized into one column. I have used months as an example, but this could easily apply to dates, years, or other ways your columns are split up. This will result in more records in our table, but a lot less columns. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm in my Jupyter Notebook that is leveraging interactive glue sessions. I've already ran this line of code, but just to show you what it does, I've just set the number of workers to be two nodes for my Spark cluster, and I've set the glue version to be 3.0. So in addition to the boilerplate import statements that come when you start a new glue job, I've had to add one line of code, and this is to import the expression class from sql.functions from PySpark. Okay, so I just wanna make sure we give that a run. All right, so the first step in order to unpivot our data is to bring our data in to create a dynamic frame. So my data is currently being stored in S3, and the schema has already been defined in the glue catalog. So here I'm using the create dynamic frame from catalog method in order to create a dynamic frame from the glue catalog. So let's just give that a run. Great. Now, just to show you what the data looks like before we unpivot it. We can see that we have an item type and for each item type, we have a month of sales data for each item. All right, so for the second step here, what we need to do is convert our dynamic frame into a Spark data frame. And the reason we need to do this is, unfortunately, there isn't a dynamic frame transform that will automatically unpivot our data. So we need to convert it into a data frame. All right, so now the third and final step in order to unpivot our data is now we're going to be leveraging the stack method and we're going to be creating an expression. So with this expression here, what we're doing is we are now saying, okay, for all my columns. So as you can see here, we have four columns and, and we're defining the number of columns that we're going to be unpivoting. And next is going to be the original name of the column. And then the second one is going to be the new name if we wanted to change the column. And that's going to appear now as a value. So for this case, I've kept them the same. That's why you're going to see one in quotes and one without any quotes. So we're going to have to do this for every single column that we want to have in our normalized column now. And last, we're going to say as, okay, so now what are the, the name of the new column that we're going to be aggregating the names to? So I'm going to say, I want, you know, all of these columns to be a text in the month column. And then total sales is going to be the value that is coming from each of these columns. All right. So I hope that makes sense. And then finally, we're going to be using select. So now we're saying, okay, we want to apply this on the item type column. So it's going to be aggregating it based on that. And then we're passing in our expression over here. And if we just give that a run now, show you what it looks like. We now see that instead of having five columns come out, we now only have three. And now we're going to see that we have item type coming out multiple times. And now we have a value for every month and now we have the total sales by month. Great, so we've successfully unpivoted our data. Uh, one thing I wanna point out before you unpivot it, you wanna make sure that your data sets are in the exact same data type. So for example, you want my months to all be the same. So if you have any strings here and you attempt to do the unpivot, it's gonna throw an error in the unpivot statement that we're gonna be performing here. So in the event that your data is not in the same format, before you run the unpivot function, you wanna make sure that you're converting your data set to be this exact same data type. So I hope that makes sense. Great. So now that we have our data successfully unpivoted, we can now save this to a database or we can, you know, continue to do additional analyses on it if we wanted to. Another thing I want to point out is the result of our unpivot is just a Spark data frame. So if we want to write it back to the Glue catalog, then we want to make sure that we're converting it back to be a dynamic frame. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching. And if you learned something or think this video will be helpful for other data engineers, please hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing for more videos on working with data on AWS. Thanks again and see you next time.